Hi everyone. In this video, which is part 1 for the direct kinematics section on robotics, we will be looking at how to assign frames to a robot manipulator. Now this is an important concept in robotics, as we have to be able to describe how a particular part of the robot is oriented with respect to any other part or object in this whole system. If you aren't quite familiar on what frames are and how they work, check out my previous video on spatial descriptions and transformations by clicking the link up here. I'm Chums and welcome to That's Engineering. Alright, so before we get into assigning frames for a robot, let's have a look at links and joints, the two things that make up a robot system. So any robot, such as the one shown here, can be thought of as a set of rigid bodies connected in a chain through multiple joints. So for example, this robot would have a joint over here and it would rotate about this axis. It would also have another joint on top over here. And these two joints are connected through this rigid structure. So this structure would actually be a link for the robot and each link would be connected to its neighboring links through multiple joints. Now there are different kinds of joints that a robot can have such as screw type and spherical joints but the two we will be focusing on are revolute and prismatic joints. Revolute denoted by R and prismatic by P. So a revolute joint can rotate or revolve around its own axis while a prismatic joint can move linearly up or down left or right. We focus on these two joints as they are the simplest to work with as they have only one degree of freedom. A general purpose robot should have about six degrees of freedom. Any robot with more than six would be redundant. And if a robot has less than six, it could be deficient. A rule of thumb that we follow is that if a robot has n degrees of freedom, it would have n number of joints, but n minus one number of links. So for this general purpose robot, having six degrees of freedom and six joints, it would have only five links. Now let's have a look at how we can assign frames to each of the joints in a robot system. Now there are six main conventions that can be used for assigning the frames to the joints of a robot. But this is best understood through an example. So if you look at the robot here, this would be the base of the robot. It is fixed, it doesn't move. The first step would be to identify what the joints are and imagine or draw a line if it helps running through the axis of movement for each of the joints. So the first joint would be over here. It's a prismatic joint as it moves linearly up or down with this variable d1. The second joint would be a revolute joint. It rotates about this axis and the third joint would also be a revolute joint. So the axis of rotation for the revolute joints would run through their center, sort of something like this. For the prismatic joint, the axis of movement would run along the direction it is moving in, which is linearly up or down. Now we have to be able to assign or find the direction of these three joint axes. For the revolute joints, the direction can be found using the right hand rule, where the four fingers of the hand represent the rotation or the direction of rotation theta, and the thumb would point in the positive direction of the joint axis. So for our two revolute joints, as they are rotating in this direction, they would point upwards. Same for the next revolute joint. So this would be the positive direction of the two joint axes. For the prismatic joint, it would still point upwards because it moves away from the base, the direction it is moving in. The second step would be to assign the z axis for each of these three joints. 
So this can be assigned as Z1, Z2, and Z3. So what we have done here is we have assigned the Z axis for the three frames for the three joints, joint one, joint two, joint three, pointing in the direction of the joint axis. But we don't yet know where the origin of these frames are. We just know the generic direction and line in which the three Z axes are pointing in. Now let's have a look at the next step. So the third convention shows us how we can assign the origins for our three frames for our three joints. Here we would consider the I and the I plus one joint axis. What this means is if we are to set the first axis, we would consider the second. And to set the second, we would take into account the third, so on and so forth. Now there are two main methods or two main conventions depending on how the axes are oriented. If the axes intersect with each other, then the point of intersection would denote the origin for the first axis. If, however, the axes are parallel to each other, we would draw a common perpendicular between the two axes, and the start of the common perpendicular would denote the origin for the first axis. So looking at this example, to set ac one, to set joint axis 1, we will consider the second joint axis. The two axes are parallel to each other, and so the common perpendicular would lie along this link. Perpendicular here, and perpendicular here. The start would be at this point, and so this would be the origin of the first axis. To set joint axis 2, we will consider 3. These two are again parallel to each other and the common perpendicular would lie along this link. The start of this common perpendicular would be at this point. So the Z2 would lie over here. This would be the origin for joint 2. To set joint 3, we will look at the next frame, which is the tool. So here, Z2 is actually pointing in this sort of direction, but they don't intersect because Z3 points upwards and the plane containing Z3 is sort of something like this. Whereas the plane containing the tool is actually over here. So they're actually parallel to each other, they will never intersect. Because of that, the common perpendicular lies along this link. And so the start of the common perpendicular is this point and Z3 lies here. Now let's have a look at if the two axes intersect with each other. So imagine a revolute joint over here connected through some sort of link to another revolute joint over here. So the axis for the top revolute joint would run through its axis of rotation, this being the second joint, and for the first joint, it would run through its axis of rotation in this way. Now in this case, the two joint axes intersect at this point. Therefore, to set the origin for the first axis, we would consider the second axis, and the two axes would intersect at this point, so the origin for the first axis would be over here. So the Z for the first axis would point up, it can point down depending on how the first axis and the second axis rotate. So practically what you have to get from this is to set the origin, you have to look at if the axes intersect or if they are parallel. If they intersect, the point of intersection is the origin. If they are parallel, draw a common perpendicular, which is usually along the link. So the common perpendicular is usually along the link, and the start of that common perpendicular will show the origin of that particular axis. So the next convention looks at finding or assigning the x-axis to each of these three frames for these three joints. Normally, for the calculations involving frames, 
only two axes are required the z axis and the x axis so we will give priority to finding these two axes compared to the y axis so to find the x axis or to assign it again there are two methods the first being if the joint axes are parallel to each other in the previous step we were able to find a common perpendicular here the x axis would simply lie along this common perpendicular if however the two joint axes were to intersect with each other to find the x axis we would have to first find the planes that these two joint axes are contained in so this would look sort of something like this you have a plane here and another plane over here and you would find the intersection of these two planes and the x axis would be normal to that intersection of the planes so coming back to our example to find the x-axis for joint 1 in relation to 2 we would look at the common perpendicular between 1 and 2 and the x-axis would simply lie along that common perpendicular for joint 2 it would lie along its common perpendicular and for joint 3 along its common perpendicular now coming back to this case with the two revolute joints to ask the joint axes are intersecting to find the x-axis first you will have to find the two planes for these two joint axes so for the first joint the plane would be something like this and for the second joint the plane would be something like this so if I was to redraw this I have one plane over here and another plane over here and this would be the intersection between these two planes the x-axis would therefore be normal to this intersection hence the x-axis for the first joint x1 would point in this direction normal to the intersection between the two planes now the direction for this x-axis is taken assuming the second joint is rotating in this direction usually by convention the x-axis is assigned opposite to the direction of rotation of the particular joint so in this case because the joint is rotating in this particular direction the x-axis has been assigned opposite to that direction of rotation now let's have a look at the last two conventions for assigning frames. So now let's have a look at the last two conventions. The fifth convention shows us how to assign the y-axis and this is done using the left hand rule. So here the thumb can denote the z-axis, the index finger the x-axis and the middle finger the y-axis. These three axes can be shuffled around, but the concept behind this is that the y-axis should be mutually perpendicular to both the z and the x-axis. Like I mentioned earlier, for calculations involving frames, namely finding the DH tables or the Denevit Hartenberg representations, only two axes are needed, and this is usually the z-axis and the x-axis. Due to this, we can actually omit finding the y-axis, it's not very important. The sixth convention shows us how we can assign our base frame. So the base is typically fixed and would represent the universe or the world coordinate system. The base frame can be assigned arbitrarily, but we would assign it as closely as possible to frame 1 so that the joint variables can be made to 0. So in this case, we would have x0 in the same direction as x1 we would have z0 in the same direction as z1 and y0 so this video was the first part in the direct kinematics section for robotics i will be doing a few more videos which will cover dh tables 
and from that transformation matrices you will actually see how these transformation matrices were created from scratch through assigning the frames and finding joint the various joint parameters finally i will do one full worked example involving everything from the entire direct kinematics section which would make things much easier for you to understand all right guys so that's all for this video if you guys liked it please click the like button below if you have any questions or clarifications on the work i just did involving assigning frames please feel free to leave a comment and i will do my best to get back to you i hope this video helped and if you haven't done so already please subscribe